plural recesses and plural reflections. I want to talk about plural recesses because they're actually quite straightforward, but you have to get through quite a lot of complicated 3D stuff to get your head around exactly what they are. Uh, do you remember we talked about the plural before? You remember this thing? Um, so we'll do a quick revision of what the plural is. Um, we'll talk about the difference between plural reflections and plural recesses. We'll look at the plural surfaces. We'll look at the plural reflections. And finally, we'll actually get to the plural recesses. And if I do a good job, you'll have a clear idea of what they are. And when we get there, you'll think, oh, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's obvious, yeah. If I do that, I've done well. So, plura. Um, the plura are serous membranes covering the lungs and lining the thoracic cavity, as it were. Um, so, the lung is looking nice and smooth and shiny because it's covered in visceral pleura and if we take the lung out we see that the thoracic cavity is lined with another shiny membrane and that's the parietal pleura so it lines the the, uh, the, the, the thoracic wall, it covers the diaphragm, um, it covers the, the mediastinum, um, so it encloses the lungs. And there's, there's um, the visceral pleura and the parietal pleura are one continuous membrane that meets at the hilum and fold in and out, and the two pleural bits. Each lung has its own set of pleura. So if you damage the pleura on the one side, the other side uh, stays functional. Go check the pleural video to see a bit more about that. So if the lung is covered in visceral pleura and the thoracic cage is lined with parietal pleura, there is a potential space in between the two layers of pleura and that is the pleural cavity or also gets called the pleural space. What's inside the pleural cavity? Well, a little bit, a tiny bit of fluid and that's it. Um, it's a potential space because, because it's an enclosed space, the pressure in there can't change. So as we move the thoracic cage, the parietal pleura gets pulled with it, the visceral pleura gets pulled with that and the lungs get filled with air and stuff, all right? So that's the pleura. You probably knew all that. It's just a little bit of a running warm up. Okay, so now uh, we need to talk about shapes of pleura. That's what we're really into today. So, which pleura are we talking about today? We're talking about the parietal pleura, the pleura that's lining the thoracic cage, covering the diaphragm and that sort of thing. And um, you're gonna have to use your imagination a little bit. We'll use the lungs and other bits and bobs here, but you're gonna have to, you know, use your, 3D imaginatory capabilities to work out what we're talking about. Now, whoops. oh, there's this office. The parietal pleura gets names depending upon where it is. So, the parietal pleura covering the diaphragm is called the diaphragmatic pleura. The parietal pleura lining the, uh, the thoracic cage, so lining the ribs, uh, the intercostal muscles, the costal cartilages, all that sort of stuff. Yeah, so the stuff that's it's in there. That is called the, the costal pleura. Um, the, the lungs extend up into the neck. All right, so there's the clavicle there, here's, here's the uvula stinus, we're up here, right? So, so the apex of each lung kind of extends up into the neck. So the parietal pleura, uh, which you would find here, Yes, the parietal pleura in there would be called the cervical pleura because of the neck association. And then the, the, oh God, I've got so many bits already. Um, the parietal pleura that's up against the mediastinum. So remember the heart, the central part here in the thorax is called the mediastinum or mediastinum. And we've got various, I've done a video on that as well, I'm sure. So the bit of the parietal pleura that is medial up against the mediastinum, which is in the middle, that gets called the mediastinal pleura. 
Okay, so we've got essentially descriptive terms for the different surfaces of parietal pleura depending upon what they're, uh, what they're lining or what they're up against. Okay. So what is a pleural reflection? Well, a pleural reflection is, we're still talking about parietal pleura, is when the parietal pleura takes a change of direction, when it forms an angle, right? So you can imagine that um, the parietal pleura, I said imagine, <laughs> as, the, the, as the costal pleura passes to the mediastinum, and the, the parietal pleura on the costal surface changes direction to form the, um, the mediastinal pleura, that would be a pleural reflection. So if I use the lung to help you imagine where the parietal pleura is, okay, because the lung's covered in visceral pleura, but the parietal pleura would be over the top there, you know, it's on here but I've taken this off, so you've got to imagine it's still there. Um, where the costal pleura meets the mediastinal pleural pleura anteriorly, that gets called the sternal reflection because it's at the level out of the sternum. It's, it's largely posterior to this, right? So the the costal surface of parietal pleura is running in this direction, and then of course it needs to change direction and run that away, run posteriorly to form the mediastinal surface of parietal pleura. So that's the sternal reflection. And then when the same thing happens, that's quite a, sh that's quite a sharp reflection, that's quite a, a sharp angle change. Posteriorly, when this costal pleura, or this costal surface of parietal pleura, changes direction at the vertebrae to run anteriorly and form the mediastinal surface of parietal pleura. That's, it's kind of a, it's a more subtle angle change, it's more of a curvy shape, but that gets called the vertebral reflection. So that's two reflections. Now, if you think about the shape of the lung, there should be there should be like four reflections, but only three are ever talked about. Because I see, I'll show you what I mean. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure what the fourth one is called. Um, but so we've got the costal reflection and the vertebral reflection. Now the next thing that happens, which isn't possibly terribly obvious from here, um, is that the the costal surface of parietal pleura hits the diaphragm and has a sharp angle change where it it runs down and then covers the diaphragm so we go from a, a costal pleura to a diaphragmatic pleura two different surfaces of parietal pleura right and that that change in direction there gets called the costal reflection and what can we see if I put both of these in? It looks, so, if the sternal reflection is here, the costal reflections are then kind of running down at this sort of angle here, right? So they're running to the left and to the right. So what we've got there is we've got, oops, we've got very sharp borders uh, in the anterior part of the thorax, very sharp borders to the lungs. You can see that there, because what's happening is we've got the heart in here and then the lungs are trying to fill all of the space that's available to them. And then of course, for that to work, there's got to be another covering of parietal pleura over the top of that. And then we've got the mediastinum in the middle. So everything's very tightly packed together. So we've got the sternal reflection here, and then we've kind of got this costal reflection running this way and this way. So can you see how it's not going to be symmetrical because the heart is pushing over to the left side of the thorax. It's taking up space over there. It's changing the shapes of the lungs. So the costal reflection on the left is going to run at an angle over this away. We're talking about that, that reflection, that, that shape change of, 
of parietal pleura. And in fact, um, that, that costal reflection is continuous. I'm using the lung as an example, but remember I'm talking about the parietal pleura that's in here, right? But, you know, just looking at the shape of the lung, the, um, the costal reflection runs down and then it, it runs around this edge here back to the vertebral reflection. And that's what we've got in there. That's what, that's what that, that groove is in there. What you can see in there, that's all parietal pleura. So you've got to try and get that, that 3D shape, right? You're imagining it, you've got it in your head. There's no lung there. You've got to imagine the front on here. So you've got your diaphragmatic surface of parietal pleura, costal surface, mediastinal surface, cervical surface, but importantly then, the shape change between the, the, uh, the costal surface posteriorly to the mediastinal surface, that's the vertebral reflection. And then when you have that reflection anteriorly to the costal surface here, that's the sternal reflection posterior to the sternum. And then as this this reflection runs around here and around the base here, around this steep angle in the diaphragm there. That's the costal reflection. Costal meaning, meaning ribs, right? Now the other reflection, which I, I don't know, but the other reflection is the mediastinal surface, right, is running down to the diaphragm. So the mediastinal surface runs down here and then changes direction that way. So that's another reflection, right? And I think that's the diaphragmatic reflection, but I've not found a whole bunch of sources that name, in it, name it, describe it, and agree to it. Which suggests it's not terribly important, right? So this is all kind of mishmash, um, not important stuff, but it's leading to the important point. So hopefully you'll be, you'll be clear on what reflections are and re recesses are. So that was the hard bit, and given by how the textbooks don't really like to talk about reflections too much, um, probably not terribly important, but it is important to your understanding. I can understand why people get confused about plural reflections and plural recesses. It sounds like terms that could be interchangeable with each other, but they're not, they're two different things. Um, so I need to describe, the, that's the complicated bit, so that you can then understand the simple bit, that's actually the important bit, and then you'll feel confident, because you're like, I know what a reflection is and I know what the recesses are, so I feel confident in my knowledge. Right, the recesses are where you have a, this is a recess here, right? This is, so this is the, the costal surface here of parietal pleura is running here. The diaphragm, of course, is this lovely domed shape. So the diaphragm is quite steep here, and that's the diaphragmatic, diaphragmatic surface of parietal pleura. So the parietal pleura runs down here, then up here, and it's forming a very, very sharp angle. That angle is forming a, Mm, space, potential space, it's forming a recess. And that is the costo-diaphragmatic recess. Costo-diaphragmatic recess. So it's between two layers of parietal pleura. Now if you breathe in really deeply, you may flatten your diaphragm enough so that the lung actually fills, oh blimey, fills that costo-diaphragmatic recess. When you're breathing gently, when you're breathing easily, you have this costodiaphragmatic recess. It's important clinically, and we'll get to that in a moment, I think. You can see it on x-rays, right? See, that's, that's the easy bit, right? Now there is another recess, which is a bit more awkward, three-dimensionally speaking. Now the other one goes back to this idea of the heart taking up a lot of space here. So this is gonna take a little bit of imagination because again, you know, if I, if you imagine the thoracic cage on there, there's, there's little or no space between the heart and the thoracic cage. But we've got the lungs in here. Um, okay, so remember that the lung is trying to fill all the space that it can. So that's covered in visceral pleura. And then you've got to imagine parietal pleura over the top of that. So we've got the, um, the, the costal surface of parietal pleura is running across here. Then we've got that sharp angle change as it, as it follows the lung under there. So you've got a really, really sharp angle. I said that 
I said that was the sternal reflection up here, then we've got the, the costal reflection running down kind of with the, the angle of the ribs down there. Now that costal reflection there also gets really, really sharp. But you've got to imagine that a little bit because it's really difficult to show. I mean, maybe if I had a bit of paper. All right, like maybe a nice green bit of paper. We've got the... So the green is parietal, parietal pleura. Um, so it's covering the lung like this. But in fact, it's, it's forming such a sharp angle change there that it's there, you've got parietal pleura against parietal pleura. And again, if you breathe in really deeply, the lung may well fill that space, but if you're breathing easily, it won't. And this is the, the costomediastinal um, recess. That costomediastinal recess is not the same on both sides. Um, again, because the heart is pushing into the left side, it means that there's a larger costomediastinal recess on the left side over here, or around here somewhere, um, than on the right side, the right one's smaller. Um, there are also some other little recesses associated with kind of folds with the esophagus and the aorta as they run through the thorax and next to the, the pleura. Pat, nobody, nobody talks about those. One of the reasons this feature is particularly important and something the students really want to know about is because it's something you can see on x-rays and you're expected to be able to see, recognize and talk about. It's this here. Can you see this lovely sharp angle here? So the costodiaphragmatic angle is inferior and lateral. So here's the diaphragm here, uh, and there's the, the thoracic cage coming down here. So the lungs are in here, um, air is black, it's dark, um, and if you've got you know, fluid or wet tissues and what have you, um, the fluid will be radio opaque, it'll be white. So normally you'd want to look for these nice sharp angles. These would be the costodiaphragmatic recesses. And if fluid is pooling in the thorax for whatever reason, uh, pulmonary effusion for example, then that fluid is going to collect in the erect patient um, down in these costodiaphragmatic angles here. So you get used to looking for these sharp costodiaphragmatic recesses and when they're blunted and they're not sharp anymore then you think, huh, hmm, mm. So on another 3D note then, don't forget that that costodiaphragmatic recess and that costal line of reflection, it continues around posterior. So it's, it's easy to see here, just because that's the direction we're looking in. If we were to take other sections, we'd also see it, right? So that, that recess, that sharp angle between the domed diaphragm and the, the internal thoracic cage is sharp all the way around here, which means that costodiaphragmatic recess continues around here. It's not just, it's not just laterally, all right? Uh, the costomediastinal recess is not, not so easy to see on x-ray because you've got other stuff there in the way. But that's it, okay? So parietal pleura, the surfaces, diaf uh, diaphragmatic, costal, cervical, mediastinal, the three or four lines of pleural reflection, um, vertebral, posteriorly, between the the costal surface and the mediastinal surface. Um, sternal anterior up here between the mediastinal uh, surface of parietal pleura and the costal surface of parietal pleura, which is imaginarily here. Um, and then the, the costal line of reflection running kind of diagonally down across here. Um, and around to the vertebral bit. And then of course the costodiaphragmatic, I mean that's the crux of the thing really, it's all about the costodiaphragmatic recess. That's the bit you should take home, that's the bit you should remember and be confident in. Um, costomediastinal recess is a little bit trickier. It's hard explaining 3D stuff when you can't perfectly show 3D stuff. It's not even easy to show when you're dissecting in a cadaver, you know. In terms of surface anatomy, you'll find the, um, the, the costodiaphragmatic recess in the mid-axillary line, 
right? Between about ribs eight and ten, um, it's about five centimeters long or so. It's, um, you know, a useful site of accessing that pleural cavity. Um, but that's for clinical people to talk about, not just us poor anatomists. Uh, that's it, right? Okay, parietal pleura, pleural surfaces, pleural reflections, pleural recesses. You know what each of those four words refers to. You know why they're different. The next trick is remembering the names of the bits. All right, that's enough. See you next time.